Hi, this is Andy Summers, and you are logged on to guitar.com. I think, you know, you develop an eclectic style from uh, what you're drawn to, what you're attracted to. I mean, there are a lot of different kinds of music I, I've liked. You know, mostly, you know, I hear like a harmony or something, or even something maybe played on the guitar and you wonder how is it done it's, I think it's just curiosity and it's, it's, it's a bit like uh, in my case I've been drawn to a lot of different styles you know whether it's you know Brazilian music or classical guitar or jazz or some blues stuff and then you know some, finding a way to kind of combine them all until finally you kind of forge your own style out of all that in my mind I don't know exactly how you keep it all together except I think your style somehow becomes recognizably yours and it is sort of eclectic you know not just say straight ahead blues or straight ahead bebop or just you know rock or just fusion I mean I've kind of like tr definitely in my case I don't like getting stuck in one genre only I, you know I think the guitar is a very unique instrument and you can kind of if you spend enough time with it you can find a unique voice on it but you know I think you're always just trying to like play the sounds that you like I mean I like you know I've always you know, like I like, you know, a lot of open string voiced chords. you know stringier chords and that sort of thing where you open up the harmony bit and give it a more modern voicing rather than just I get bored with that personally after all I like to hear you know something possibly slightly mystical coming in from somewhere I like all that uh, minor second kind of thing I also do that kind of thing in the police it, it, because it remains in a more interesting place, it's more neutral than when you use what they call tertial harmony, where you're just playing. I mean, it's old-fashioned sounding to me. And, uh, Sounds a bit more major. Yeah. But if you start playing. And then start taking it out from there. How do you find a unique voice? It's, it's, it's you know, what a lot of people don't. You know, I mean, we're all searching for that. You know, trying to get something. You know, hopefully, you know, you reflect who you are and your your playing. It, it takes a long time to get to that. I mean, I think the first thing is you start off just emulating what you like. You know, copying a lot of players, trying to learn a language, whether it's rock, jazz, blues, whatever, and then maybe you'll combine all the things together. You start playing what you like. I think it's actually hard to try and do something so you just don't sound like anyone else. I think you just have to keep going with the right sort of um, uh, sincerity and then it comes to you. I mean, it's a lot of work to play the guitar really well and to take in a lot of music. It takes many years. I think you do that. I think you become aware of the history of playing guitar playing and the field and what other people are doing and you, you find your way in it you know whether it's even down to you know the way you hold the pick the kind of attack the way you attack phrases the sort of amp sound you use your sense of time I think one of the first things I, I think one of the most important things uh, in playing is time it's the first thing to be a really good improviser more than more than First, more than choice of notes or harmonic sense or anything, is to play really well. Have really uh, how you phrase and where you place the time, how you feel time. You know, that's really the first thing. You'll learn how to play in time. Like uh, you've got to sort of understand the form. Like if someone's playing behind you, like say a bass player and a drummer, if you're even playing something as simple as a, a twelve-bar blues, a three-chord twelve-bar blues, you've got to really sense that form. 
so deeply and easily that you, you can play within it and, and outside of it and, and you're tired you always know where the form is you always come back in the right place that's the first thing to get is a sense of form and time so then you can start getting more sophisticated with you know harmony and stuff but the first thing is, is to get that time thing you ought to really play with the drummer Well, the trouble is with a lot of the effects is it actually is going to have the reverse effect. It's going to make you sound like everybody else uh, because every you know there's basically uh, if everybody's buying the same sort of boxes that are available, it, a lot of people are <laughs> saying the same. I think you know if you really want to get a sound, you've got to kind of find it with other means. Unless you want to become like a real sort of electronics you know uh, guitar player, like someone who's brilliant as. Uh, David Torn, and he's really taken it a long, very deep way, but he's not buying commercial boxes and doing stuff like that. He's creating it through very deep knowledge and creating amazing stuff. But that, that's kind of a whole different field. I think you've got to be very careful with effects. Uh, the longer I play, the more I, I don't want to use effects. Because uh, you start coming back to really just liking the sound of the guitar and what you can get out of your hand and your choice of you know, notes, time, and other words. I mean, someone like Jeff Beck, you know, who's a great rock guitar player, he doesn't really use a lot of effects. He plays with his thumb now, too, and he gets a great sound, and uh, he's not getting it out of effects. So you have to be very careful. I went through a period of it, you know, when it was all new in the sort of 80s, and uh, it, was, it was fun for a while, but um, I think you can lose a lot of your identity with effects. So be very careful there. Anyway, they, I think they should enhance what you're playing rather than, uh, you know, sometimes they can be the whole thing in itself, but uh, uh, I find that the ear gets tired, you get tired of them quickly. After a while, it's just not like, you know, it's like eating a, it's like eating a certain flavor of ice cream, after a while you're tired of it. You always come back to the real thing. You, know, there's nothing, you can't make really good pickups and a really good amp with valves, that's the real thing. Anything else on top is gravy. <laughs> I can only say, you know, I've been playing all my life. I, you know, I believe I've had a very sincere, uh, you know, and sort of heartfelt approach to music. I've always really loved it. I've never done it for commercial reasons. And I still believe I'm a humble student of the instrument and music. You know, you'll never master the guitar and you'll never master music. It's just too vast. But you keep going and... Uh, you enjoy it. I mean, in my case, I've been attracted to a lot of different things, probably more sort of 20th century sounds. I like more advanced harmonic stuff than just straight ahead blues or rock. I play that's fun to do as well. And so when I've played, you know, in a band like The Police, I've tried to introduce other elements uh, into playing behind a singer that kind of make it a little, you know, it's like adding a twist of lemon to everything, you know, making things a little more stringent, a little more interesting than just you know, because it, it, it sort of perks the ear up, wakes the ear up of the listener, and that's what I like to try and do, um, push in the, uh, the unexpected elements. But you need to uh, have a pretty wide vocabulary in your head, and that's not means that you have to be able to play everything, but you need to be aware of a lot of different kind of music and sounds. You know, I think if you're naturally a musician, you, you would be curious about like maybe listening to you know Middle Eastern music or Bartok or I don't know, or Thelonious Monk, or you know, indigenous music. You, and you, you don't have to play everything, but you become aware of these other ways of playing music. And somewhere along the line, it gets into your own playing. You start finding yourself trying to make those sounds, and that's what builds you as a player. You know, and eventually it's going to come out, however it comes out through your particular grid. So that's been my path. You know, I mean, they, as a, as a, as an overall aesthetic. You know, I mean, there's many millions of hours of studying and learning how to do things and be very comfortable and physically facile on the instrument. That, that's just that's hard work you do over the years. But it's work that you love to do, so I like that, you know. It's hard to, like, there's no formula. It's just who you are in your journey and through, through you know, the musical world. Yeah, I'll turn the question around. The two, but um, some of your early influences, some of the people who inspired you, yeah, back from you know, like West Montgomery, yeah. Um, what maybe you can play some of the, you know, some of the, the phrases that, that inspired you, um, some of the. Well, I probably could actually, yeah. I mean, there were a lot of guitar players that, you know, when I was starting out that I liked. 
most of them were American players and uh, uh, well I started out anyway I mean Wes Montgomery was a big favourite of mine at that point because he was a phenomenal guitar player not the most uh, knowledgeable even or educated in terms of what people know today but he was just an amazing natural player I mean I used to play this tune called West Coast Blues which I learned to you know, the whole solo of and everything. It's a tune that goes on. about this thing, the incredible solo on it, because all the chord changes to solo on it are different. So I was about 15 when I started learning how to play that. He would always play it like... So great, or the minor seventh changes. Oh. And so on and so forth. So I started here for Digging those sounds when I was a teenager, getting off, and then you know you moved on from that. I also like people like Gabor Zabo, who's big at that time. That's probably where I get all this open string chords and started. I hear you know more kind of Hungarian sounds and minor seconds started to come into my vocabulary. And um, I was playing a rock band at the time, playing very loud. And I think at that point, this was probably a precursor to the police. People didn't quite understand what I was doing because I was playing a lot of open string chords rather than everyone else was you know that kind of thing when I was playing all these open string things it sounded kind of weird but later of course they became they became in vogue you know. but I've already been starting to try and do that for a long time ahead you know you can get to things faster now because there's an amazing um, industry for guitar playing now. I mean, the guitar suddenly is the instrument of the of 21st century. Uh, but I don't really think there's a shortcut other than you get to the material fast. You've still got to put in the time. I guess on a certain level, um, when I was starting out, this, I mean, the guitar was still sort of emerging. It, I mean, it was sort of starting to come into play, but it's nothing like it was now with videos and instruction, and, you know, the web and everything. It was, um, uh, I grew up in England and this, it seemed like the guitar was, was an American instrument and it was coming from America and it was over there and I was over here and the guitar was over there. And I, I kind of look back on that period as a, you know, kind of a gold, golden period because it was like my generation sort of discovered the guitar and brought it in and it slowly came up and we had to sort of you know, kind of dig it out of the woods and bring it out into the daylight, and and then it started to become a thing. Whereas now, it's it's um, I think possibly you know there's too many options that are you know for you know someone just starting out you know say if you're you know 13, 14, 15, there's so much available. It could be a little confusing. We had to work. It was sort of. Uh, almost like an oral tradition at that point you know how, how you got you got to find out about the guitar and you know one guy may know one chord and the other guy may know the other chord and, and you was, it was like trying to fit together these very difficult pieces of a puzzle there was no books nothing was uh, available to teach you so uh, the way we really learned was by studying records I spent hours hunched over vinyl LPs thousands of hours you know, you know trying to copy solos and trying to hear things but 
probably maybe people don't have to do that now but the thing about it was it, uh, I think when I think back about you know all those hours I sat on the floor like trying to copy like a Wes Montgomery solo you, you sort of soak up the, the, the player's being and his feeling and you really get the feeling you know was, in those days it was like slowing at 33 record down to 16 and stuff like that but it, it was a great way to learn because um, it really trained your ear you had to find it and it would, it would you know and at the end of you know, several hours of trying to cop a solo because we had no idea how things were done then uh, you'd be by osmosis you would have taken a lot of that stuff into you that the whole feeling of the music whether it's blues or jazz whatever it was so I, I think it was a very good way to, to, to learn rather than having I don't know if you take things in uh, in the same way when it's just laid out for you we had to work very hard and, and listen you know I was always listening trying to get this stuff you know I think that's uh, that certainly helped me as a player.